real world course success and failures. Want to learn about slums? Hang around. Go Drone X. Hello, FPV tree racers. I'm Greg, and I'm from Go Drone X. Last summer, over a six month time frame, we ran around 20 events. Let's take a look back at what succeeded and what didn't, and we're going to start off with slaloms. The purpose of a slalom is to create a rhythm section. In a motocross example, that would be these little bumps that are coming through here. Slaloms typically are five gates, uh, and our best practice is to design your courses to fit in one and a half times the soccer field, or around 450 feet. Uh, a typical gate is set around 60 feet, which translates into around 20 paces. Each pace is around three feet. Uh, traditionally, I set these on the back side of my course because I am usually constrained on size and I, I want to keep the course small. Remember, the bigger that you have a course, the longer it takes your people to retrieve the down craft. If it takes them longer to retrieve down craft, you're not going to get your throughput, not as many races. And what's the fun of that? We're there to race. Uh, so traditionally, the entry of a five turn slalom is you're never coming at it straight, you're coming at it through turns like this. Okay, what's a typical rookie mistake? Well, rookies usually start turning way too late and then they start falling behind the turn. Sometimes in car racing, that's called tank slapping. So they'll come through the first turn, second turn, oh, turn too late. They now start skimming it on this side of the flag, on the, the back part of the, the turn, and they overshoot and then they got to th throw it sideways, correct, losing lots of time. So uh, the, that rewards um, the proper line can be taken very, very fast. Now, there's another misconception about what's the proper line. Anybody who's ever done any type of ski racing know that you want to be looking two or three gates out. Um, the, the correct angle here is you want to be slicing the inside of this. If you're a snow skier and you do moguls, for example, you'll know that we always want our to scrape our inside edges on that inside part of the hill. Same concept here. As for skiing, you want to come and, and hook this end here, come around and be completing completed the turn by the time we enter this uh, this this gap. The reason for that is if we do get in trouble and we fall behind, we have way more time to correct than if we do it this method. Here, if we make a mistake, as you can see here, there's no time to correct. This first started with fails. Uh, a three-turn slalom. Well, usually in a three-turn slalom, you're coming and you're entering over here and you're exiting straight out. Uh, well, like I said, most users, most rookies will start to fail and get behind the turn by the third turn. Well, if you only have three turns, it doesn't expose their weaknesses. So I found that this just doesn't work. There's no point to doing a three turn um, slalom. So what did work is a five turn slalom. We're alternating, usually coming on the backside this way. So that you're not coming into a slalom usually straight on unless you have an extremely long course. You come through and you alternate. That does work, 60 foot spacing. Next the staggered slalom. Staggered slalom is where we take the same set and we offset these around 15 feet. Uh, you're pulling hard banks for these. You should be about 90 degrees when you're sliding through these. Um, i show you a couple examples of those. Here's an example of one. The star finishes back here. We come through that uh, feature and then here you stagger through here, through here, through here, and through here, and then there's a another flag back here. And here was a large course design. This is around a 45 to 50 second course with a, a pretty intricate three element here. And again, here's another good example of a staggered slalom. This one I would probably cut, make a little bit tighter, but you can see the racing line. We're, we're cutting the inside of it right there. So these yellow uh, markers represent um, the correct racing line. Let's take a look at a couple of fails that didn't work. Uh, one was the stuttered slalom. That was where I created a gap in between the series of five. I think on a lot of these examples, I did three in the front and then two in the back. And what failed about that was it really wasn't a slalom. It wasn't a rhythm section. It was really two series of different obstacle types. This would have been a simple turnaround, and then this became a, a switchback of, of sorts. Here was an example of a large X1 Cup event we did in a small field. This is again, this from here to here is about 100 or, or 350 to 400 feet, about one and a half times a, a soccer field. We came in from the right side. There were three flags here, one, two, three. Um, and this flag was a little closer over here. So it became a one, two, three move, a long straightaway. This was a couple hundred feet and then a quick turnaround and back when we went to this double feature. Here's another example we did as a precursor to this race. Uh, we had a flag tucked in over here. It came around one, two, three turns, about 200 feet to shoot over here, and then a, a switch back. 
Here's an example of another slalom fail, the broadening slalom. And each spacing off center gets increasingly larger. And that's exactly what it did. It wasn't a rhythm course at all. It really was a series of hairpins. It just added to the length of the course. It didn't test the pilot's skill like it was designed. The last and most successful form of the slalom that we got a chance to try was the gated slalom. Uh, once again, you're limited to the number of gates you really have in a field. The less gates you can use, the better. Our goal was to create five turns. So here we used, uh, when we make our, our gates, our duck unders, we take two of these flags and then we uh, bind them together with, with some elastic and they hold up really, really well. They create around 25 square feet of opening, which is equivalent to a five by five opening. Works really well and it gives uh, organizers the ability to be flexible. They can use it either as a flag or a gate. Um, these are 32 inches in fabric, so there's plenty of room to spot these things. Um, so here's how we did a, f we still got five turns, but the tendency for people in slaloms is they start drifting higher and higher and higher and higher. So what this does is in the middle of the obstacle, uh, the challenge, it brings them back down low. So they come through one, two, three. They can slice this now depending on how much of a stagger we have because you got to now fly this and this is about five and a half feet in the, the tallest. Um, and then they exit out to the right hand side depending on which way they enter the course. I like that one the best. That's the one we're going to use almost exclusively next year. Go Drone next. See race results at GoDronex.com and join the conversation on Facebook at GoDronex and FPV Tree Racers.